Hey y'all, it's Jessica from Sloppy Swatches. Today I will look at the Mason collection that's available right now from Cirque Colors and at select retailers. This is a limited edition collection and it was sent to me for review. So I'm going to go ahead and get right into the swatches. So first up is Stoneware and this is described as a speckled pale peach. So this is a very, very light nude shade. It has lots of copper pops of glitter in there. It is more of a crelly. So I'll go ahead and show you a quick look at that brush shot. And then I'll show you how stoneware swatched on my natural nail. So here's a look at that first easy coat. Even though this is a Crelly, this is not too thick. It's very easy to work with. It does lay nice and flat on the nails. So one coat made for a nice milky blush of color. It was still a little bit sheer though. So I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. And then show you how it built up for me with a second coat. So here's a look at my second coat. It did push this one right to the edge of being completely opaque for me. If you go super thin, I feel like you may need to maybe opt for three coats here. But I was was really happy with the finish at two. I did have to do a little bit of cleanup with acetone and a cleanup brush, but here's a look at that completed mani. Had two coats before, glossy top coat underneath artificial lighting, and here's a view from another angle in direct sunlight with a glossy top coat. And this is my final swatch photo at an angle in that direct sunlight. So next up is a plush suede. And now we're getting into the shimmers, which I think are the highlight of this collection. This polish is described as a delicate pink lilac with glowing copper shimmer. So everything that you see in the bottle translates beautifully to the nail. Here's a quick look at that brush shot. And then I'll show you how plush suede swatched on my natural nail. So here's a look at that first coat. This one is a little bit sheer. I ended up doing a little bit of a thicker first coat here. It did make for a nice easy application with minimal brush stroking, really no issues at all. I'm going to go ahead and complete this coat, let it dry, and then show you how it built up for me with a second coat. So here's a look at my second coat. It does push this polish completely opaque. I did go in for a little bit of a thicker second coat. So again, if you opt for thinner coats, you may need to go in for three. This is a stunning polish and definitely among my top picks. So here's a look at that completed mani. At two coats before glossy top coat underneath artificial lighting here you're going to get a little bit more of the shimmer and maybe a little bit of that hollow but here's a view from another angle and direct sunlight and that's really where these polishes are going to shine this is my final swatch photo at an angle in that direct sunlight so next up is Rothko Red, and now we're getting into some of the thermal polishes. This is described as a temperature sensitive red that changes to deep ox blood when cold and bright crimson when warm. So here it is in the cold state. It's a deeper red. This is another of my top picks, just very fun to play with and a really good formula. So there's a quick look at that brush shot. And then I'll show you how Rothko Red swatched on my natural nail. This red is a little bit squishy. It almost feels like a jelly, but it is super pigmented. One coat made for a nice coverage. I am going to go ahead and let this dry and show you how it built up for me with a second coat. I just feel like the shift is maybe a little bit stronger with that second coat. So here's a quick look at that. It does push this polish completely opaque. You can already see towards my cuticles it's going a little bit more of that brighter red and towards the tips it is getting a little bit darker. This polish does dry down matte or almost semi matte. So here it's still a little bit wet but here's a look at that completed mani. at two coats before glossy top coat underneath artificial lighting. I'll show you how it shifted for me really quickly in my teacups. So to the right I have ice cold water and then to the left I have a really hot water. You can see there how deep and dark this oxblood gets. This is not completely color accurate. The white kind of threw off my balance a little bit but you can see it does shift to a very bright red. I'm going to go ahead and show you a side by side for easier comparison. So super beautiful. It's going to make a really cool gradient on the nails. This is a look at the reverse shift at an angle underneath my artificial lighting. So next up is Succulent Garden, and this is another top pick for me. It's just a beautiful polish. This is described as a light khaki green with a fiery red shimmer. And just like the other shimmers, what you see in the bottle translates beautifully to the nail. There's a quick look at that brush shot, and then I'll show you how Succulent Garden swatched on my natural nail. So this one does start out fairly sheer. It does have a good amount of shimmer already and a good amount of glitter, but it is definitely one that you're going to have to build up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and complete this coat, let it dry, and then show you how it built up for me with a second coat. So here's a quick look at my second coat. I did go in for just a nice normal second coat here and it did build up this polish to full opacity. If you go super thin, again, you may need three coats, but this finish is worth it every time. Super gorgeous. So here's a look at that completed mani at two coats before a glossy top coat underneath artificial lighting and I am living for that red on green shimmer. Just super cool. This is a view from another angle and direct sunlight with a glossy top coat and again this is my favorite way to play with them is in natural sunlight. This is my final swatch photo at an angle again in that 
direct sunlight. So next up is Magic Turquoise, and this is another thermal polish, really cool. It's a little bit different from the others. This one is described as a temperature sensitive speckled turquoise that changes to green when cold and then a light blue when warm. So there it's more in the cold state. Here's a quick look at that brush shot, and then I'll show you how Magic Turquoise swatched on my natural nail. So here's a look at that first easy coat. This polish is full of those copper flakies. A really beautiful polish. It does look like a stone, especially in the warm state, I think. One coat was super close to being completely opaque. I am going to go ahead and let that dry and then show you how it built up with a second coat. I do feel like that second coat might make the shift just a little bit more evident. This in the natural shift on the nail is maybe a little bit subtle. It's going to go more blue towards the tips and stay a brighter green towards the cuticle. So here's a quick look at that complete amini. Add two coats before a glossy top coat underneath artificial lighting. It may be a little bit hard to make out here, but there is definitely a difference between the tip and the top of my nail. Here's a view for another angle and direct sunlight with a glossy top coat, and that smooths out those coppers just a little bit. So next I'll show you how it shifted in my cups. Again, this is not color accurate at all, but to the left I have hot water, and then to the right I have ice cold water. So you can see there it does turn more of a almost Kelly green when cold, and then a really cool bright turquoise color when warm. I'll go ahead and show you quick side by side so you can see the difference a little bit easier. So it is going to be evident on the nail, even though it's kind of skewed maybe in my pictures. So here's a look at that final swatch photo at an angle and direct sunlight and just the natural shift. So next up is a Lapis Lazuli, and I love that these polishes are named after gemstones. This one is described as a cobalt blue with a metallic speckles. So those metallic speckles look like a multi-chrome flakies to me. Super cool in this mix. I'll go ahead and show you a quick look at that brush shot, and then I'll show you how Lapis Lazuli swatched on my natural nail. So here's a look at that first coat. This one is super close to being a jelly type finish. It is a little bit sheer here in this first coat, but you can already get a ton of flakies there. I'm just going to go ahead and even this out, let it dry, and then show you how it built up for me with that second coat. So here's a look at my second and a final coat and it does pull this polish completely opaque. It gives it a ton of depth and just a really cool effect on the nails. I think that this would be one that'd be amazing with a top coat. I wish I had taken the time to take a swatch photo for you guys but those flakies are just phenomenal in the space. So here's a look at that complete amini at two coats before a glossy top coat underneath artificial lighting. Here's a view from another angle and direct sunlight with a glossy top coat. That blue is so vivid and stunning. This is my final swatch photo at an angle in that direct sunlight. So next up is a Velveteen. I'm going to go ahead and call it, you guys, this is my number one top pick of the collection. This is described as a slate blue with glowing copper shimmer, and that is exactly what it looks like on the nail. It's almost like a denim type blue. Very beautiful. Here's a look at that brush shot, and then I'll show you how Velveteen swatched on my natural nail. So here's a look at that first easy coat. Not too thick or too thin, just goes on really smoothly. It is a little bit sheer here, and I did have to maybe be a little bit mindful of brush strokes. They do mellow out all on their own, though. So I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and then show you how it built up for me with a second coat. So the second coat easily brings this polish completely opaque. The finish is just stunning. It's going to look beautiful underneath all different lighting sources and it was really flattering. So here's a look at that complete amini at two coats before a glossy top coat underneath that artificial lighting. You can see that shimmer is all out in the forefront here. Here's a view from another angle and direct sunlight with a glossy top coat. Again with that shimmer but more of that hollow peeking through as well. So this is my final swatch photo. I an angle in that direct sunlight. So next up is Druzy, and this is described as a multichromatic gunmetal foil. So this is more of a micro glitter polish. It does have all kinds of different glitters in there, but mostly a stunning like gray slate shade. Here's a quick look at that brush shot, and then I'll show you how Druzy swatched on my natural nail. So here's a look at that first easy coat. This is in a clear base, so it's going to take maybe a second coat for sure to bring it completely opaque. It does have a good amount of glitter, though. It's really opaque, just not full coverage. So I'm going Go ahead and let that dry and then show you how it built up for me with my second coat. This second coat does for sure easily bring this polish completely opaque with no issues at all. You can see from far away it looks almost like a graphite color but once you get it up close you can see all those beautiful rainbow colors peeking out. Really cool polish and I've not seen anything like it. So this is my completed mini at two coats before a glossy top coat underneath artificial lighting. Here's a view from another angle and direct sunlight with a glossy top coat. And then this is my final swatch photo at an angle in that direct sunlight. 
So the last thermal that I have to share with you today is patina. And this is described as a temperature sensitive bronze foil that changes to a dark bronze when cold and then a coppery bronze when warm. So this reminds me of all the shades of a lion. Very cool effect. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a quick look at that brush shot. And then I'll show you how patina swatched on my natural nail. So here's a look at that first coat. This polish is not thick when applying, but it is super opaque, very dense and pigmented with those glitters. I am gonna go ahead and complete this coat let it dry and then build it up with the second coat. I just feel like those thermals might be a little bit stronger with that second coat. So here's a quick look at that. You can already see towards my cuticles it is turning that warmer almost orangey bronze shade. So the second coat for sure brings it completely opaque with no issues. I'm going to go ahead and complete this coat, let it dry and then show you a look at the completed mani. So here's a look at that completed mani at two coats before a glossy top coat underneath artificial lighting. This one does dry down a little bit dull. I definitely do recommend going in with your favorite glossy top coat. So here's a view from another angle and direct sunlight just at the natural shift you can see it's a little bit darker towards the tips I'm gonna go ahead and show you how it shifts in my cups really quickly so again to the right I have ice cold water and that brings it deep and dark and chocolatey and then to the left I have warm water and that brings it more orangey kind of fall tone very warm on the nail so again I'll show you a quick side by side just so you can see that comparison again this is not color accurate at all it is a little bit dark the white of my cups threw off my balance a little bit but here's a look at that side by side so really cool. Uh, definitely one of my top picks again. So this is my final swatch photo at an angle in direct sunlight. So next up is Estate, and this polish is described as an antique gold foil holographic made with our unique sterling silver pigment. They do recommend doing two coats on their website, but I'm going to tell you guys this is totally a one coat polish for me. Here's a quick look at that brush shot, and then I'll show you how Estate swatched on my natural nail. So here's a look at that first and last easy coat. Again, this is super dense, very pigmented. It's not thick or hard to work with at all, just really awesome coverage. It does give you a ton of holographic graphic flare and it's just a really cool polish. If you already have golds and you're thinking that you may not need this one, I think the formula alone is going to be awesome as well as a stamping. So here's a quick look at that completed mani at just one coat before a glossy top coat underneath artificial lighting. Here's a view from another angle in direct sunlight with a glossy top coat and this is my final swatch photo at an angle in that direct sunlight. So that does wrap up my swatch interview of the Mason collection. Again, these are available right now from Cirque Colors. If you're interested in any of these, I do recommend checking Checking them out. They are limited edition. If you'd like to see any photos of any of the polishes featured here today, I do have those available on my blog at sloppyswatches.com or you can also follow me on Instagram at sloppyswatches. So thanks so much for watching guys. See you next time.